welcome to the Big Bang's biomechanics series. We know that rigid body rotations do not change a body's shape and are not the cause of any strains. Consequently, rotations also do not change the stress values. So naturally, you would imagine that the two ideas are separate from one another, and very well they are. The deformation gradient tensor F can be decomposed into two other tensors, the rotation tensor R and the stretch tensor U. We can use components from the stretch tensor U acquired from the deformation gradient tensor to obtain strain values. That is, R must first be removed from F before you can break down any strains that may have occurred in the body. Polar decomposition revolves around the concept that a matrix can be represented as a product of an orthogonal matrix and a symmetric matrix. Thus, any transformation represented by F is a combination of scaling along orthogonal directions by non-negative amounts, that is, your strains, and a rotation with possible reflections. The rotation tensor will be a proper orthogonal tensor, which means that its determinant is positive 1. All the eigenvalues of the symmetric matrix will then be non-negative. The stretch tensor will be a unique symmetric tensor that is also positive definite. The fact that the stretch tensor is also uh, positive definite means that its determinant is a positive value. You can always use these facts to check for the properties of the tensors with which you are dealing. Finally, we know that the deformation gradient tensor F transforms d big X to d little x, and aware of this, we can write the transformation equation as d little x equals to F times d big X. We can now use polar decomposition to find expressions for the tensors R and U, which can be obtained from F. From our definition of F, we can start by multiplying F by F transpose. It then follows that we have U transpose times R transpose times R times U. Since U is symmetric, U transpose equals U, and we can replace that. R transpose times R will then equal the identity matrix. This allows us to simplify the equation and arrive at u times u, that is, u squared. Thus, we reach our final definition. The stretch tensor u equals the square root of f transpose times f. Once you have the stretch tensor u, you can easily find the rotation tensor r from r equals to f times u inverse. Notice that this arises naturally from the definition of f. You can double check your answers in a couple of fashions. First, you can always multiply r times u and check if you get the f tensor you originally had. Second, you can multiply r transpose times r and check if you get the identity matrix to make sure that the rotation tensor r is an orthogonal tensor. Let's finalize with an example to drive the concept home and practice a little. I will leave the equations for u and r on the screen for us to refer back when needed. Our deformation gradient tensor is here in blue, and we want to use polar decomposition to break it down into the rotation and stretch tensors. Let's first start with finding the stretch tensor. We need to multiply F transverse by F, which we can do no biggie. We end up with the following tensor. Let's call this tensor C, just so we don't have to say F transverse times F over and over. To get the stretch tensor, all that is left now is for us to take the square root of F transverse times F, or C. If C was a diagonal matrix, this would be very straightforward, and we could just take the square root of the individual tensor components. But since C is not a diagonal matrix, we need to go on a little trip. This trip starts by finding the eigenvalues of C. You can go about finding the eigenvalues of C the usual way by solving the characteristic equation. So you take the determinant of C minus lambda times I and set that equal to zero. We learn that the eigenvalues of C are one, two, and eight. We can use the eigenvalues of C to construct a tensor called C tilde, where the eigenvalues are placed on the diagonal. C tilde can be used to find U tilde, which will help us find U later on. We find the tilde by taking the square root of C tilde, and since C tilde is a diagonal matrix, we can simply take the square root of the individual components. To get the stretch tensor U from U tilde, we now need to use the following expression. 
In this expression, n is a tensor constructed from the normalized eigenvectors of c. So you found the eigenvalues of c earlier, now you need to find the eigenvectors. After normalizing those eigenvectors, you can place them in order of increasing um, eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenvalues you found previously on each column of n. In this case, column 1 would have the normalized eigenvector of eigenvalue 1, which is the smallest eigenvalue. Column 2 would have the normalized eigenvector of eigenvalue 2, which is the second smallest eigenvalue, and so on. Our final n is the following tensor in pink to the left. We now have all that we need to solve for the stretch tensor u. We plug n u tilde and n transpose, and voila, we found our, I, our, our stretch tensor, <laughs> yay! From here, everything is straightforward. You can get the rotation tensor r from the expression we got earlier, where we multiplied the deformation gradient tensor f by the inverse of u. Plugging things in, we get our rotation tensor, which is yay, double yay now. Just as a sanity check, we can always multiply the rotation tensor r by the stretch tensor u to make sure that we do get our original deformation gradient tensor f. You can test for yourself at home too. I did this one over here and it worked out just fine, which is pretty cool. I hope that this has been helpful to you in your adventures exploring biomechanics. Good luck on your studies and I will see you next time.